Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we're going to be exploring the alkanes, alkenes and alkynes a little bit more in detail. In the last couple of lessons we've just been spending time identifying the different types of molecules but now we're going to look at what these things actually are. So let's start up with the alkanes. So here we have a couple of alkanes on the screen. Now alkanes are the simple ones. They literally just consist of carbons and hydrogens and they are only single bonds. That's it. Carbons and hydrogens, so we give those a name, we call those hydrocarbons. By the way, in the last couple of videos I've been talking about alkanes, alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, esters and things like that. Those things are called the homologous series. Okay, so we can say that an alkane is a type of homologous series. So I, in one of the videos I called them families, but the proper technical name that your teacher is going to say in class is homologous series. So we are looking at the alkanes, which are a type of homologous series. You get other types like alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, but we're looking at alkanes, okay? So they are hydrocarbons. They also have some really cool thing happening. Check this out. If you count the number of carbons in this first molecule, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then if we count the hydrogens, there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so Kevin, what's so cool about that? Well, I'm just going to write that down for now. So I'm going to say that there are 5 hydrogens and I mean 5 carbons and 12 hydrogens. Let's do the next one. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbons. And then I'm not going to waste your time, but if you had to go count all of those hydrogens, you'd see that there are 20. Don't believe me? Pause the video, check it out. And so we can see, see that we have C9H20. Then this one over here has 1 carbon and 4 hydrogens. Now there's a pattern emerging. I know it might not look really obvious right now, but check this out. The pattern is the following. If you times the number of carbons by 2 and then you add 2, you will get the number of hydrogens that they are meant to be. So for example, if there are 9 carbons, if you times that by 2, that's 18, plus 2, that gives you 20. And guys, this isn't rocket science. Check this out. For, this, for each of the carbons that are in the main chain, they always have 2 hydrogens, like definitely. See that? And then the two on the end, they have an extra one. And that's where, that's why I said you can take the number of carbons, multiply that by two, because they all have two hydrogens, and then just add two to the answer for the two hydrogens that are on the end. And so we can say that the general formula for hydrocar or for alkanes will be Cn H, then you say 2N plus 2. So if we have uh, 10 carbons, then you say C10, and then the H's will be 2 times 10 plus 2, so that will be H22. And so there we have it, guys. The general formula is CnH2n plus 2. So you need to get used to that, because I could, for example, in an exam, they could say, okay, so we've got this molecule C5H12. Give the homologous name. Now you might say alcohol aldehyde. But if you realize, hey, hey, it's only got carbon and hydrogen, so that could be an alkane. And the ratio is 2n plus 2. So you say 5 times 2, which is 10 plus 2 is 12. Oh, that's an alkane. All right, so here's a very random question. What do we use a towel for? You know, a towel that you use when you get out the shower, get out the bath. That's, that towel is used to soak up water from your body. Okay. But let's say you working in the kitchen for example and you spill a huge bucket of water all over the kitchen floor because we all work with buckets of water in the kitchen don't we now if you were to use a towel to try and clean up that water or try to soak up that water i'm sure you've done this before you'd realize that that towel does not have enough uh, what could we call it? Water retaining ability. Okay, it can't it can't collect all the water. Eventually, the towel becomes full, or the proper scientific word is saturated, and then you can't add any more water to that towel. That's usually when you would have to go uh, squeeze the towel so that all the water comes off, and then you could use the towel again to try soak up some more water. So in chemistry, we're going to talk about the word saturated. And when something's saturated, it means you can't add anything more to it. So what I want you to do is quickly look at each of these carbons. They have one, two, three, four bonds. 
I can show you any of them. Check here. One, two, three, four. And so those carbons are saturated. We know that carbon can only form a maximum of four bonds. And so alkanes are saturated. We will look at alkenes next and we'll see what unsaturated means. Okay, so the next important thing you need to know about alkanes is that they are saturated. And that's about it really. We'll look at alkanes at a later stage when we start looking at the naming. But for now, those are your alkanes. I hope you're feeling a lot more comfortable with them. Next will be the alkenes. Now the alkenes are the guys that have the double bond. Okay, that's, what, that's what's important for them. So this will be a lot faster than the alkanes because straight away we see that there's only carbon and hydrogen and so these are also called hydrocarbons. And guys, the word hydrocarbon, it's self-explanatory. Hydro for hydrogen, carbon for carbons. There's only hydrogens and carbons. Aha. Next, we need to look at their general formula. Oh, and by the way, their homologous name is alkenes. Okay, so remember that is a type of homologous name or homologous series. I know it's a weird word, homologous. Who comes up with that? But that that's what that's the group of molecule. It's called the alkenes. Okay, and remember there's nine different types, nine different homologous series. Let's look at the general formula now. So if we look at this first one, it's got one, two, three carbons. Okay, so I'm going to say C3. Then if you count the hydrogens, there would be six for the next one. One, two, three, four carbons. And if you count the hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so look at the pattern now. The hydrogen is always double the number of carbon. So let's see how this makes sense. These alkenes are the same as alkanes, but they have a single double bond. Okay. Oh, by the way, if an alkene has two double bonds, we haven't looked at something like that yet, but you can easily get a molecule that does something like this. When there's more than one of those double bonds, then these formulas don't work. Okay. I've never really seen them do that too much in an exam, but just remember that those general formulas only work if there is one double bond. So as I was saying, these are the same as the alke alkanes, which have the general formula H times 2N plus 2. But we need to understand how a double bond is formed. So if we have a carbon-carbon with hydrogens, okay, so the important thing is look at how many bonds are surrounding each carbon. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then, one and then 4 for that one. Now that always has to be like that for carbon. So what's going to happen is the following. If we want to form a double bond... We can put a little double bond over there, but now you've created a bit of a problem. Now, each of your carbons have one, two, three, four, five. That, that double bond consists of two bonds, hence it's called a double bond. So, we have a bit of a problem. So, what we're going to do, unfortunately, we're going to have to kick away some hydrogens, sorry, hydrogens, on either side. Now, have a look at each carbon. So, this carbon on the left now has one, two, three three, four. So now everything makes sense. Carbon is happy again. It is bonded to four. It has four bonds surrounding it. And so notice what we had to do. We had to knock off those two hydrogens. Okay. And so that is why we are going to lose this part. And so this part here was for alkanes, but alkenes just do this. They lose that plus two. And so that is the general formula for alkenes. Now we need to look at the concept of saturated and unsaturated. These molecules, these alkanes, they are not saturated. That means that they are like a towel that can still collect more water. The reason I say that is the following. If I had to come along, so I come along here, I come along here, and I break this bond over here, then if I enlarge this part of the molecule, it's going to look like this. You've got a carbon and then you've got a hydrogen, and then you've got a carbon, and a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. I've broken one of those double bonds, and so there's only a single bond now, okay? Oh, and then this one was bonded to a carbon. What's happened now is that each of these two carbons are only surrounded by three molecules, or three atoms. And so if you break that double bond, which is fairly easy to do in chemistry, you can then, to complete carbon's requirement for having four bonds, you can then add another hydrogen. That's like adding more water to your towel. So if you ever see a double bond or a triple bond, you must remember that those are unsaturated, meaning that they can still have more things added to them. Because once again, if I come along, because over here I can't do anything. I can't break a single bond. A single bond... Um, 
it's very stable. A double bond, you can break it. So you break this one over here. Now all of a sudden, this carbon only has three things surrounding it, and so does this carbon. So what we can then do to fix that is we could add a hydrogen to each thing. And so notice that we can still add more atoms to this molecule, and so we call it unsaturated. And lastly, the alkynes. I promise this one's going to go a lot quicker. The alkynes are very... Teachers barely ever test these ones, but they are pretty much um, the same as alkanes, except that they have a triple bond. So it makes sense that there's no hydrogens attached here. Because if I had to attach a hydrogen over here, then if you had to look at this carbon, it would be surrounded by three bonds here, four, and then five. So remember, carbon can only be surrounded by four bonds at a time, not three and not five. So quick summary, they are hydrocarbons, meaning there's only hydrogen and carbon. Their general formula, I'm going to go through that. So if we, we can imagine that these ones have even less hydrogens, let's quickly look here. One, two, three, four carbons. And then if you quickly count that up, that's going to be six hydrogens. So that's C4H6. This one here is one, two, three carbons. And the hydrogens will be four. The formula for these ones is you multiply the number of carbons by two, and then you subtract two. Okay, so four times two is eight, minus two is six. So their general formula is C n h then you times that by two but then you minus two so notice that the alkanes which have the most hydrogens they were c n h 2 n plus two then the alkenes they subtracted that and then the oh, oh that's two n and then the alkynes minus another two so it starts off at plus two then goes to two n so they take away a two and then they take away another two and so their general formula is the following and then lastly, guys, these things are unsaturated. Why? They are like a towel that can still hold more water. Because if I have to break these bonds, then I can open up more bonding positions and then more hydrogens can come and attach, meaning more water. Uh, if I'm thinking about the towel, my towel can hold more water. So these are unsaturated. And that's it, guys. I hope you really learned the difference between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. They are all hydrocarbons. We looked at their general formula, and we looked at what saturated and unsaturated means. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.